You have five on it? It's the I'm Not Your Lawyer show. I'm Jason. I'm here with Paul Stortz. We're, uh, we're talking Ethereum. Is Ethereum a security or not? I got five on it that it is. What about you, Paul? Yeah, well, you know, the funny thing is I thought we were just going to have a conversation, and then at the end I was going to have to admit that somehow they weaseled out of this. But so far I think everything we've said is like brought it much closer to being – It's nuanced, I mean, isn't so it? Clearly there's a – clearly they put money in, and clearly they did expect profit, and clearly the people who put the money in, there's huge separation of labor and kind of agency – from the people who put money in, you know, people who end up creating this value, so and to what, speak. And when you and, say they, you're talking about the people that bought Ethereum bought, tokens, yes, right? Yes. And yeah. um, another thing is that I, it just occurred to me a couple of minutes ago that we might actually have like two different projects here, which is that even if Ethereum itself in steady state is kind of some decentralized project that owning Ether would not be related to the Howey test or anything like that, or be in a Bitcoin class of things, does it matter that there might be like an, a, an earlier project phase, right? Like an earlier phase that's like, if you invest, we will build this peer-to-peer -peer thing and pay you back right. some of it. Uh, I'm not sure if that ends up, if we actually have two different projects here and the first, no matter what the second one is or how similar the second one is to Bitcoin, since they hadn't, they raised the money before they'd finished the project, if that, it's itself. Well, listen, let's, of... let's, uh, let's, let's back up for a second. And, right. and in my recollection back in 2014, and people in, in, the, uh, in the forum, they can chime in on this if they want. But my memory was that they were doing this token sale in order to raise money to be able to finish developing yeah. their platform. Now, am I right on that? Guys, yeah, let's, let's, let's go to the yeah. forum for a second. Let's see uh, what some of the folks in the Exotica – we have 33 viewers in the forum right now. 33. Wow. Um, apparently, someone can hear our farts loud and clear. <laughs> That's always – keeping it classy in the forum. All Thanks, right. guys. Um, let's see. Anybody else? Let's see. Did Samson give you that make Bitcoin great again cap? Well, when you go to an AMA, uh, you get strange questions that aren't on topic. Again, the question we have for the forum is – Back in 2014, wasn't it your memory? It was my memory that they were doing the it's token totally sale in order to raise funds to be able to finish the Ethereum project because they didn't even have a working platform yet, right? That's yeah. they, they made a token. They were selling a token so that they could finish building their platform. That's my memory. Uh, guest 200483 says, agreed. Uh, Paul the Nig, uh, come <laughs> on, guys. Can we keep it guys, clean? Like it's a family uh, show. Says they have a white Pepe. It's really not a family show because this is <laughs> – we're doing this on a porn site and people it's for, people it's have asked something. me why a porn site and I tell them it's very simple. The porn industry yeah. has done more for free speech than any other yeah. industry uh, in the United States. Yeah. All right. So uh, here's, the, here's the question about the hat. Where did I get my hat? Uh, actually, this hat I got in Buenos Aires. I paid $500 for this hat at an auction because the proceeds went to charity – Oh, there we go. All right. So that's where I got my hat. My hat's worth 500 bucks. I've got Andreas's uh, autograph on here. Go. I've got, let's see, who else do I have there? Can you make it out? I don't know. The, all these people, they're too full of themselves. They got fucked up <laughs> signatures, you know? All right. So uh, we've got, it seems at least, some form of consensus that, um, yes, Ethereum was... Their purpose for the token sell was to raise money in order well, to Well, I know. I sent you the uh, intended use of revenue documents. So yes. just look at it maybe. Oh, okay. Know. Is that the uh, truthcoin.info? Yeah, that's the one because, I again, I had to rescue it from the site. They took it down. I got it with like the way back at like the last minute or something. Okay. But, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna transition it over here. We're looking at it now. Let me, uh, let me check it out. full screen this. We'll get this a little bigger for the peeps. These projections are guidelines for the use of revenue from the Ethereum pre-sale, it says. ETH Swiss reserves the right to change oh, yeah. any and all allocations in its sole discretion. Now, ETH Swiss wasn't created until yeah. afterwards. So this is a modified document, right? Everybody agree with that? Oh, there were uh, there were different versions of it. I don't know exactly what the timeline was. But yeah, of course, if Vitalik put out the white paper and then – they got together with some friends and then they announced that they were going to do a crowd sale and then they created ETH Suisse, I think, 
to hold the money. I think that was right before the crowd sale, and I don't know exactly what the timeline is, but right. that's the way I remember it. So and scenario the grant needs to, be to like have a bank account to like hold all this money. Right. So basically. they say scenario one, they raise nine million. Scenario two, they raise twenty two point five. Scenario three, greater than twenty two point five. Uh, they have expenses re uh, incurred prior to and related to Genesis <laughs> sale. That's the token the sale. Loan system, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, plus a legal contingency fund of a million dollars. Hold yeah. on a second. How Hold did on. they get wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. Hold they on. They did a lot of science to figure that number out. Let they me just come have in. to come out to exactly six zeros. Let me come in close for a moment. This is. I want to speak to the <laughs> the legal contingency fund. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got a million dollars. You need a, a contingency fund. I'm your guy. Yeah. I will take your million dollars and I will tell you whatever you want to hear. Because that's what they paid for. Is it a security? No, 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 no. Just sell it overseas and call it a donation. If that's what it takes to earn a million dollars of your money by lying to you, fuck, give me your money. Yeah. Vitalik, I'm your bitch. But here's the thing. I'm sitting here right now telling you, get your money back. Get your yeah, money back. Right. Get it back. Get, get it. it back. Going back. Here we go. So we have the legal contingency fund, a million bucks. So total pre-allocated revenue out of the sale is 2.8 million. They say maximum usable revenue, 6.2, 19.7, 20.5. Now, interesting. Distribution of usable revenue. What are they going to use it for? It says delivery development of Ethereum platform and tools. So that's your question. So... 76.5%. So 4.7 million, they are going to spend on developing the project. Money. Developing the project. Oh, wait, no, if they raise 22 million, they're going to spend They're going to spend 15 million of that. Right. So that's what I was telling you earlier is that like normally if you have a business plan, you, you know exactly how much it's going to cost, right? You say it's going to cost exactly 7.4 million and a half or something, 7.4 right. or 50. And right, then you right. say, this is what I need. And if I don't get... I won't get it and I'll give the money back. But if I do get it, we'll do the project and I don't need any more than that. So we're going to stop as soon as we get, but if they're just like, you know, whatever. Well, if we make 20 we million, we'll spend 15 million developing it. But if we only get 9 million, yeah, we'll right? spend 4 million developing it. That's Listen, I mean. so isn't there, isn't there something crazy about that? I mean, that has to be. I've development costs. Like be some kind of. Well, no, no, okay. Let me let me play devil's advocate for it's a moment. Be something sort of illegal there. You know, well, let me play devil's advocate. Let me see if I can come up with a rational argument in favor, right? All right. Well, if we had twenty-two million, we could develop it a whole heck of a lot faster because we could buy the tools, hire the people, really put the work into it, put a a, a quality control team on there, and we could really get it going, and we could get it faster, deploy faster, and bring our product to market for you. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's it would a good nice argument, isn't find, it? Yeah, that was pretty good. I didn't expect that was pretty good. I yeah. think well, I, well, that's I, what I do. My right? is... It is. It was pretty good. My suspicion is that if we found the terms and conditions document or something or some other information, it would say like it would it would not say that it would, of course, say I mean, because we both know like kind of what I think was kind of really going on here, which is that they just they were not going to turn away any extra money that was going to walk through the door. And I think that if we found more evidence, we, but I, I think that's good. Dude. It was a, that's a good way to beat it on this this evidence alone. Wow. But yeah, I mean, like a lot of this stuff was just like uh, you know, kind of. I mean, this is only a single page. That's kind of funny in itself. One page. Right? All yeah. right. Now, uh, during the break, you sent over another thing that you wanted to talk about. And this is the difference between yes. um, between yes, Ethereum and and Bitcoin. And it's a post from Satoshi. Right. So. Um, Going back to 2010, let me let me zoom in on this a little bit so that the First sentence. forum can hear it or see it. I mean, can you guys read that okay? The nature of Bitcoin is such that once version 0.1 was released, the core design was set in stone for the rest of its lifetime. Yeah. What do we know and about so, that? I mean, what so does that say? So what, what I, I think if we take that piece of evidence, I mean, it's a big claim. So he might have been wrong about that, but I think he was right about it because he later departed. I mean, this goes to your question that the management and control question that you were talking about with the Howie test. Like he later departed. We had all these other things, Satoshi Roundtable, et cetera, these meetings of people who want the block size, you know, people who want to change different parameters and they're, yep. they're unable, consistently unable to, even though they right. really want to. And we have these... Um, 
the idea of the hard fork where the the network even though we've done things via the, the difference between a hard fork and soft fork is pretty uh technical and difficult to understand but paul, i think it's kind paul, of important paul come out of the weeds for a second you're going way too yeah. deep right now all right okay what what you wanted to say i think is that the difference between bitcoin and ethereum is that Bitcoin, when it came out and people had it, is that it was already set. Ethereum, it, already set. it hadn't exactly. been developed yet. They didn't yeah. even have code created yet. And they were saying, give us your money so we can develop this thing. Yeah, totally. Is that's that exactly where I'm going. That's yeah. where you're and going. It, it's right. even Ethereum to this day is still not fully defined because they have these planned upgrades that are that are orchestrated by one person. We were talking but about I'm, that they're before they're the show mandatory. even started, right? Yeah. Program yeah. updates, coders wanting to update everything yeah. all the time. Yeah. But... Yeah. And, and we said, how how ridiculous would that be if Chevy showed up to upgrade my Tahoe once a month because, you know, they wanted to change the way that the seat moved? Right. Is it, is it your car or is it Chevy's car? Right? right. You bought it. It's your car. But so with like Bitcoin, you bought this thing. The soft fork means you don't have to upgrade. It'll still work. It'll still work for you. It'll still do its Bitcoin stuff even if you don't upgrade the software, even though sometimes maybe you should. Some people would say. But not me, really. I say you don't have to – if you don't want to upgrade, you don't have to. But with uh, Ethereum, we've got these multiple phases of you know, like Homestead, whatever, Metropolis, Serenity. They have these names, right? But there's these big things where we're going to close the old one down and we're going to start this new one up because they still haven't finished kind of just defining what it is or what, what is – and that's still today. It, so let well, alone what was in the case in 2014. That's okay. I think an, they uh, raised the money. again, being a software developer, if you're a software developer, you're developing software, you're selling software, right? Um, it's fine to have upgrades. but And I think that would be the argument that the platform that was created, Ethereum itself, the platform as the platform, is it a product or not? And yeah. that was the real question that I wanted to get into is, is Ethereum the platform itself? Is it a security? And the answer to that is no. It's a software application. All right. Um, that would be like saying, is Unix a security? Okay. And I think we can all agree that C Sharp is not a security, right? Mm -hmm. So to the extent that Ethereum is a coding language or a programming language, when people ask me, is Ethereum natively itself a security? The answer widely is no. We can just put that to bed. All right. So what we have is a bifurcated analysis. We've got Ethereum as a platform. We have Ethereum as its currency that they call it their fuel that run, that drives the platform. And that's the thing right there, that little piece. That's the, I, that's the little fucker right there that absolutely it's a fucking yeah. security. They can say, oh, well, yeah. you, need it, you need it in order to do this. But they don't sell it for that. If, if it was fuel, okay, if it was fuel, if it was uh, a thing that was required in order to drive it, it would be a fixed price sale from Ethereum itself. If it was a software license, it wouldn't change its value on a daily basis, be right? It would, be, it would be an annual subscription rate that gave you use of the network uh, for a year, right? You would have that kind of tier. For, okay, I get unlimited Ethereum for a year for twenty nine ninety five auto deductible out of my fucking uh, checking account, right? Mm. But that's not what you have. You have to go out and buy your Ether at spot rate on the market. Fuck you. That's right. not fuel. Yeah. That's not software <laughs> licensing. That's well, that's you know, selling I, securities. I almost, that's. I mean, I mean I'd come almost on. Say, I think it's almost possible. I mean, you could almost say that. I mean, so let's think. Let's talk about this. Like, if if Vitalik had finished it completely. And it still had mining, and he hadn't—he didn't give himself any of the ether. And you still mined the ether out of the ground, so to speak, and not out of the ground, but you know, out of the metaphorical ground. Yep. And you could mine it out, and then you needed to use it as fuel because Bitcoin—you need to use it to kind of defray in order to broadcast into the blockchain, whatever you like. And so I think, I think it's not quite the existence of ether. I think it's this crowd sale stuff that in this ongoing project that he can Vitalik controls. Um, so I'm just wondering if he had finished all the work himself and then he had put out something similar that said, you know, the nature of Ethereum is such that once version 0.1 was released, the core design is set in stone for the rest of its lifetime. And he said, it's, it's finished. And, you know, and then people started mining Ether. I... I would tend to think that he that he would be fine, and I think it's really this the fact that he sold this project that is is incomplete. That is really the nature, and that if it is complete, there's uncertainty about whether or not it'll be complete, right? So people invest, and they are hoping that the project 
finishes in a successful way, and if it does, they end up with more money. They end up kind of profiting. It's a bet that they will. <clears throat> so succeed. here's here here's right. the here's the thing to remember. All right, we 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 mentioned this phrase earlier. It's called a blank check investment. All right, blank check. Yes, we did. And what a blank check investment is? Give me your money. I'm going to build something for you. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to act. I don't know what exactly what it's going to do, but it's going to be great. It's going to be an entire <laughs> ecosystem yeah. uh, of, of blockchain-enabled, diversified, uh, fungible assets that are, you know, crypto-backed, man. And as that Kung Fu logaria of bullshit buzzwords <laughs> come flowing out yeah. of the mouths of these people pumping this thing, you know, all these eyes go big and they're like, fuck, I don't want to admit that that's just a streaming pile of bullshit because if it actually means something, wait, Vitalik just said Byzantine general problem. Fuck, I should know what that is. And then you're you're cowered into submission because you don't want to feel like you're stupid. Uh, Certainly it, there was a huge amount of that going on. Oh, God. Since 2014. In dazzling general, with bullshit, theory, yeah. right? So every, It's had every bizarre concept and buzzword kind of in a giant blender of some kind. So you have... Theory. You have the Ethereum sale, which is a blank check offering. And we come down to what we said we were going to talk about in the last segment, which is this. Why haven't the regulators gone after Ethereum yet? Oh, yeah. This is a good thing to talk about, I think. And I think well, there's a lot to say about this. I mean, I just think there's a lot of goodwill or whatever to the extent that that term is meaningful, which is that they – people – you know, they kind of sprint, they kind of blitzed or something, and they got a bunch of buy-in from like Microsoft and from like the governor of Delaware and stuff, and they kind of just listen. And now there's, it's like it's gotten too big, right? So they they went too big, and and like, well, they is is it good for is it really going to help a DA to like go after Ethereum or something? Like, so this is where I think you would know a lot more than well, probably most most people. This is what this is what's insane to me. The SEC went after Eric Voorhees for his sale of Satoshi dice. Yeah. Not because then, there was fraud, not because there was fraud, yeah. because he didn't register the sale. And there Boom. was a ripple as well. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Because he didn't register it, and yeah. and they fined him like one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars somewhere in there because he didn't register the sale. Nobody got hurt, but hey, you didn't play our game. You didn't you didn't file the paperwork. So because you didn't file the paperwork, we have the right to fine you. Now listen. The sale of the Ethereum token was a security. Just it was. The sale of the Ethereum token was a security. They they said, "Give me your money." Right? Yeah, we'll take care of your money for you. We'll we're, do the stuff with it. We don't know what we're going to do with it exactly, but trust us, it's yeah. going to be okay, which means management and control of others. Yeah. Per se, blank check investment. Give us your money, we're going to handle it. We don't know what we're going to build yet. That's per se management and control of others. And there was yeah. the expectation of a profit. And we saw that because Vitalik himself admitted in that interview that he knew some that people are some investment. people are using this for an investment. All right, so you know you're selling it as a security. All you have to do at that point, all you got to do, submit a registration statement. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. All you got to yeah, do. But, That's it. Just file the fucking yeah. registration <laughs> statement. Okay? And but it costs about $1,000. It costs about $1,000 no, no, per million legal. dollars that you raise. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, they have a million legal defense funds, so they should right. be able to afford it. Look, they can afford 1000 of those. If they're raising $22,000 or $22 million, eh, $22,000 for your registration, commit fifty for your uh, legal fees, it's $75,000 to raise $22 million. That's well within their million dollar legal expense fee. Sure. And then what do you have? What do you have? You set the stage to be able to have ICOs be legal in the United States and you show the blueprint to do it. Instead, what they've done is shown the path for all these fucking ICOs, all these shit coins to go out and say, well, yeah. Vitalik did it, so we can just break yeah. the law too. I agree. And, and you've yeah. got lemmings in this space, absolute lemmings in this space. Why? Because it's a copycat nature. It's a copycat nature from the saying that they take Bitcoin, the core code, right? They copy it in a whole, tweak it a little bit, and call it Litecoin, right? I, they yeah, didn't come course. up with yeah. it on their own. They just copy right. what somebody else did because it's open source. Absolutely. So yeah. when you have that nature that you can take code off the shelf, open source, and you look at that and you just tweak it a little bit and say, oh, they did it and it's working, so I'll do it too. 
You have no original thought. You don't think, how should it be done? You see somebody else did it, and you go, well, I'll just take that off the shelf, copy it, and I'll do it the fuck too. Of course. Ugh. So, I mean, oh. so there's a couple things I want to say, though. But let's. Yeah. I want to go back and say, if Vitalik had finished the project... Um, before the token sale. Right before the, there, and there is no token sale at all. Because because at that it's point, all token sale. At I mean, that I'm point, trying to nail down they, like what they allow mining. If they yeah, mine it right. and allow people to mine it, yeah. then it's not a fucking security. And that I think yeah. is that where you're I going with that. that? I, that's where I'm going. I'm trying to yeah. like let's let's try and nail down maybe some advice we can give for people who are like you know they want so and I think what would be helpful for that is I think people took the logic like I think people made a logical misstep somewhere and I think they started off okay. And they saw that they were like, well, I can buy and sell Bitcoin. That's allowed. And that there doesn't seem any logical way how that could really violate securities laws because those are about companies or something. And then people, they, they went to Litecoin. And I think it was still kind of, you know, Litecoin, like the, you know, Bobby Lee released it for free. And he's just like, this is something that anyone could have created. And I happen to be the guy who created it, but I don't own it. And you can right. buy it if you want or not. And then it sort of started getting a little murky with the uh, the what they call the pre mine, where someone says, "Okay, here's an idea, but I've stashed a lot of it for myself." And then, okay, you've got to decide: do you want to join late, you, or do you, you want to just check this premise? Right at that point, you're really starting to sniff of on on the scammy meter, right? You're, exactly. The the pre mines. So, the the latest trick that I've seen is the uh, the the developer skim, right? So for every yeah. transaction, uh, there's the skim of two to twenty percent off of the transaction yeah. value back to core to be able to allow future development. development. Right. And, and I hear so that and I'm like, your, guys, what's your of that? Right. Oh, is that it's a so scammy. Now? It's so, so that, fucking scammy. Because um, be, now the develop they're admitting the developer is like control. control. So that what's interesting about the soft fork is that you can't prevent it because it's just miners excluding things and they could have done that at any time so you're just kind of giving the miners more refined technology to filter things out and that's what's very interesting about the way bitcoin has been upgraded is that it's been it's been upgraded without developers really having control because all they do is refine the tools that the miners use to filter out like optional opt-in transactions which is very very like it's very technical and i'm sure it's very hard to understand but it's interesting that you can upgrade Bitcoin without anyone actually upgrading it. And you can like leave all the old versions that kind of work and they're still relatively compatible with each other, which is like astonishing, what, but possible. Well, you know, I mean, so to – without going too far in the weeds because I want to stay on the topic about Ethereum being a security, just to touch on that real quick. If, if you had a legacy uh, Bitcoin wallet, four years old, five years old, today you could load that wallet into Core – Yep. Import the wallet and then transfer that wallet into any wallet that exists today. So you have backwards compatibility because the network has been set up to at least be able to have those tools that work. And I don't know if anybody else is really thinking about that. I mean, and it doesn't really matter. As to, like a legal thing. But right, I'm trying to what follow that matters. The, so yeah, so with the to, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm trying to follow the logic of like where the mistake was really made, and I think that people saw these altcoins, and they saw that you could kind of vaguely make money with them, sort of. I think NXT, and then NXT really blurred this with the proof. They 100% pre-mined, right? And then they had this proof of stake model that was, of course, totally broken and ridiculous. But it ended up with like the founders had a lot of they controlled all of the money basically, right? And they had to kind of like try and give it away, but it wasn't really money, you know. It was like these tokens, but it kind of didn't really make sense. But it sort of did at the same time. And so people saw all this stuff, and I think I'm not sure to what extent you agree, but I think where people crossed the line was they said. We can sell something and then we are going to work on finishing it. And I think that that is really where the line, to the extent that it's not blurry, I think that's where it is. But I think it would be really helpful if well, we could nail down this line. What, what they said what was, yeah. and I'm going to tie this into the music. What they said is, <laughs> I can sell my tokens and damn, yeah. it'll be a good day. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get into that line that they right. crossed. When okay. we get back, we're going to take a, a break. I have to refresh beverage. We got uh, we got Paul on. We're talking Ethereum. Yeah. We're talking whether or not it's security. We're talking where they maybe made that mistake and, 
If you're about ready to do your ICO, where you can keep from making your mistake <laughs> right. too. Exactly. Listen, I'm not your lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. And oh wait, be before we do this, I just want to show. Uh, Charlie, I love you. <laughs> I'm not your lawyer. You don't want to be behind bars. <laughs> that was from our last show. Uh, we'll be back in about five minutes. We're going to leave the music going. I'm Jason. I'm not your lawyer, but I could be.